Are we on? Okay. Uh, how's it going, everyone? Today's video is called The Truth About Sila. Dun, dun, dun. Um, so this video is going to serve two purposes. The first one is to kind of piggyback off of my other video, which is a review on um, Cebuano Escrima Beyond the Myth. And the second service uh, purpose it serves is to uh, kind of give a condensed version of my Sila instructor's video on the history of Sila. And um, if you guys are interested in that, I'm going to be sure to add that link below. But um, so in that other video of mine, I talk about how uh, Sila is the mother of Filipino martial arts and how Destreza is the father, right, which is uh, Spanish fencing. But uh, this is not the complete story because, see, the word sila was not used until the 1900s, okay? So <clears throat> what was it before that, right? Um, so we go back in history and, uh, you know, the islands of Southeast Asia um, had migrations coming from India. And with them, they brought in their art of Kalari Payatu. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but um, there's definitely evidence of that art in the islands. Um, but perhaps an even bigger influence was the uh, Chinese migrations and the Buddhist empires, uh, which brought with them the Shaolin and uh, Chinese boxing forms, which had a huge influence. And this became known as Kuntao, these different styles that kind of fused together. And um, this is the real uh, mother art of the Philippines. Uh, we know that Kuntao was brought to the Philippines via the Sri Vijayan Empire, which was a seafaring uh, peoples that <clears throat> had ports in the Philippine islands. Um, Another influence that um, Santi talks about briefly, but I'm going to kind of expand upon it, is the influence of Dutch fencing. So when the Dutch came uh, to Indonesia, similar to the way that uh, the Spanish use uh, local natives of the Philippines to train them in um, <clears throat> Spanish uh, destreza, well, the Dutch, uh, when they were at war with the Sultan of Aceh, they, um, they sent in their soldiers, and the Dutch forces were armed with sabers, okay? While the, um, while the Indonesians were armed with their Klewang, okay? Now, usually, a reach, okay, is a huge benefit when you have the distance but in the jungles of Indonesia that was not the case okay the Dutch sustained huge losses and basically what the Dutch did was they took the local <coughs> weapon of the Klewing and their sabers and they crossbred them Okay. They made these two have a baby. And basically what they did was they, they shortened the uh, length of the blade and they took out some of the uh, mass of this guard to make it lighter. Okay, And they added a clip point, okay, uh, which makes it uh, a brutal thruster. Okay, uh, They <clears throat> trained some of these natives in this new... Uh, using this new sword and they are armed them with a smaller carbine and were successful um, and the Dutch clan wing was even used in the um, in America for their uh, naval forces um, Dutch clan wing is a great weapon um, a buddy of mine is actually 
making a prototype or he already made a prototype with Black Fencer, which is where I got this training weapon uh, for the Dutch Clairwanks. So I'll be sure to add that um, to my page and once it comes out so you guys could, uh, if you're interested, um, go ahead and purchase one. I know I definitely will be. Um, so we also know that the um, family of uh, the, the Tuars, now if you study um, Silat in the United States, especially under Danny Nosanto, there's a good chance that you're studying uh, Sirach Silat, which is under the Tuars family. And um, it's well known that they also were really big into fencing, not just Dutch fencing, but Spanish fencing as well. And blended that into um, into Ciroc. And uh, lastly, um, I'm also going to include a video below of uh, Victor de Tours, in which he talks about how the old style of um, sword fighting with the um, <clears throat> in the Indonesians and the Malay warriors. They did not hold their sword like this, okay? When they had the, the shield in front of them, they actually held it in reverse, in a reverse grip, which made it for this type of cutting, right? Thrusting over the shield, under the shield. And, uh, you know, he, he kind of explains as to the reasons why they would do that. So I'll be sure to include, include those two videos below. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And... I'll see you next time.